Hi class, good day. So today I will be discussing about frequency distribution table. This is just a very quick discussion on how to construct your FDT or frequency distribution table. Okay, so frequency distribution table. This is a data organization. Data in its original form, let's recall, and structure are called your raw data. I believe I discussed this in my previous rationale for your um, of your quiz one. Again, raw data are data in its original and original form and structure. When these data are arranged either in ascending or descending magnitude or order, then it is called an array. Okay. When these data are arranged or organized, these already partake the group data. Remember, group data are data that are summarized in tabular form. Okay? What is frequency distribution table? This is the procedure of organizing data into groups. Okay? Again, organization is um, part of these uh, research steps. Okay? From the collection, presentation, down to organization, um, analysis, and interpretation of data. So again, FDT is the procedure of organizing data into groups. So these are the basic components of frequency distribution table. Don't worry, we will go over with these um, definitions later in the succeeding slides. For now, you may take a picture of this slide or you can actually um, write down but take a picture na lang class to maximize our time okay so the basic components i'll just read you have class interval class frequency and class boundaries class boundaries can be lower class boundary and upper class boundary okay next Okay, you take a picture. So you have the class size, class mark, cumulative frequency, greater than cumulative frequency, and less than cumulative frequency. Again, these are the basic components of your frequency distribution table. So let's start constructing the frequency distribution table. Step one. So the example class, these are set of data given. These are the final, the, the final exam scores of 40 students. Okay, again, these are the final exam scores of 40 students. Let us say over 100 yung exam na to. Baka major exam, okay? So step one. First, let's de determine the range, okay? Ano ba yung range class? It is the highest and the lowest data. Okay, it's the difference between the maximum and the minimum value. So, dito, yung highest data natin is 91. Okay, meaning um, the highest score among 40 students is 91 and the lowest is 32. Okay, so masyadong malayo, no? So, um, the range here, the, bit, uh, the difference between the highest data and the lowest data is equal to 59. So, yung range natin is 59. Again, class, set of data to, and these are not yet arranged. Once these are arranged from its ascending or descending by, um, arrangement or magnitude, they are already called an array. Okay? Why it is helpful that we have to group them? Okay? It is helpful to put the raw data in an array, because it is easy to identify the extreme values or the values where the most, the scores most cluster or group, okay? So, it will be easier for the researchers. Kaya nga dapat organize siya, okay? Let's proceed to step two. Step two, you determine the number of class intervals. So, in determining the number of class intervals, we're going to use this Sturge approximation formula. I know class, you will ask because in the SAS module, it only says there that 
you can determine your class intervals. You can class. Class intervals could be between 6 to 20. Uh, most often, they are researchers use a class in uh, number of class intervals is actually 6. Ano ba yung number of class intervals? So, ito yung class. This one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, this is one interval, second interval, third, fourth, fifth, and the sixth interval. Okay, let's go back. Okay, Sasmoyul says that you can choose your number of class intervals. Usually, it's from 6 to 20. And for data, like 40 students, um, the population size natin, I mean, sample size, I mean, population size, um, that's only, let's use only six. But here, let's use Sturge approximation formula in determining the number of class intervals. So find the number of class intervals using Sturge, I don't know how it's read, Sturge approximation formula. So K there is the number of class intervals equals one plus 3.3 log N. But this time, you will need a calculator. I hope, class, you have a calculator with you right now, as well as your SAS module and a pen and a paper so that you can follow. It will be better. Sige. I will find my calculator first, and then you get paper and a pen so that you can follow. Okay, so that you can follow, class. For a while, I will get my calculator. Okay, I'm back. Let's proceed. So I hope you already have your calculator, your pen, your paper, or scratch paper with you. I also um, hope that you will um, follow the steps. You will also solve with me. Okay, let's solve together, class, para mas maintindihan natin. So again, let's use the storage formula. This is very easy lang. So first, you have already your calculator with you. Okay, you have already your calculator. First, that's only log. Of course, dapat scientific yung calculator. That's log n, capital N as the sum, the population size. So in here, we have 40 population. So log 40 times 3.3. Bakit 3.3? Okay, that's already part of the formula. Hindi, wag nang baguhin. Si 40 lang yung ilagay, okay? So, log 40 times 3.3, that's equal to 5.29. Do you follow? I hope you're also doing the same para magsabay tayo, para maintindihan nyo. So, that's 5.29 plus 1, that is 6.3. So, round it off, that's equal to 6. So, yung um, number of class intervals natin is 6. Okay? Let's proceed. Step 3. Determine the length of class intervals. What's the difference? Number of class intervals is this one. Okay? Ilang class intervals ang gagawin? We have 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The length of class intervals, meaning it's the class size or the range of the class intervals, okay? So the length of class intervals class is equal to the range divided by the number of classes or the number of class intervals. So again, yung class intervals natin is um, 6 as um, I have uh, shown you in the previous slide, ito, yung kinumpute natin. 
number of class intervals is 6 and the range is 6. I mean 59. I'm sorry. Let's go back. Ito. 59 yung range. Okay? So 59, that's the range divided by the number of class intervals, that's 6. Wag malito dito class hagen. Number of classes, classes or the number of class intervals are the same. Number of classes or class intervals is 6. I um, put it here 5 to 20. This is in case you will not be using stretch approximation formula. You can choose from 5 to 20. Most often use is 6, okay? So in here, I'm using 6 because that's the answer. I use the Sturge approximation formula, okay? So 59, the range divided by 6, that's 9.8. You follow 59 divided by 6, that's 9.8, and round it off to 10. So 10 yung um, length of class interval natin. Okay? So lahat ng naka-red class, that refers to the class intervals, meaning 10 yung um, gap or interval. So that's 32 plus 10, 42 plus 10, 52, plus 10, 62, plus 10, 72, plus 10, 82. Okay? So, of course, dito, yung interval na natin or yung um, uh, range ng upper limit. By the way, this is the upper limit and this is the lower limit. So, that's 32 to 41. Okay? Kasi 42 man dito. That's 42 to 51. Kasi 52 na dito. 52 to 61, 62 to 71, 72 to 81, 82 to 91. So, na, na, napasok natin, di ba? 91 yung highest score and 32 yung lowest score. In case malapas ni, it's okay, class. Basta, um, kanisad, in case lang uh, you will not start with 32, you start with 30. For example, there are data that will fall into that way. It's okay as long as yung values ng set of data mo is nandoon. Okay? Napasok siya. Okay? So, sa ako, na timing lang gid siya nung no, uh, insakto gid siya. Pero ako gid siyang gisakto class. <laughs> okay? So, in here, these are again your number of class intervals. There are 6. And the length of class interval class is 10. Again, one malito ha. Number of class intervals is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The length of class intervals, that's the range divided by the number of class intervals, meaning 59 divided by 6, that's equal to 10. So, ito siya, 32, 42, so 10 yung gap dito, 10 yung interval, 10 and 10. Okay, 10. So, understand? Let's proceed. <clears throat> if you have questions, do not hesitate to message me. Of course, during office hours pa rin. Step 4, determine the frequency. This time, um, tally cannot be included in the table, but I just include the tally. Um, it's very important para mas accurate or di ta masayop sa frequency, okay? Okay, if masayop ta din, taas na kayong table, mas kuyaw, mas kapoy. Labi na if exam na ay time limit si ma'am, Okay. So, again, frequency. Ito na tayo yung naka-orange borders. So, this one. Again, these are the classes. This is still the same problem, ha? I mean, the same given. Ma we just continue to the next steps, okay? So, natatali tayo. This is just very easy class. Parang ganito lang siya, how to do it. Like 79, 91, itali mo lang. 79, so in this part. 91 in this part, okay? Tali mo lang. Tali everything all the 40 students, okay? So, after the tally, you just total, and that is already your frequency. So, very easy. You total the frequency, total number of frequency here, 5 plus 9 plus 4 plus 8 plus 8 plus 6 is equal to 40. Why do we have to total to know if sakto ato ang tally? Because there are 40 students, okay? Again, 40 students, so dapat 40 yung total number of frequency. So, that's the time we know that tama lang yung tali. Okay? Step 5, determine the class boundaries. So, we have two. We have lower class boundaries and upper class boundaries. Mathematically class, there is a formula. But of course, shortcut na natin. 
because your FDT monthly plus frequency distribution table very predictable yung values if you notice okay but I will teach you still or show you the mathematical um, formula of the LCB and the UCB for LCB it's defined as the middle value of the lower class limit okay middle value or the average of the lower class limit and the upper class limit of the preceding class so example this one let's have the second class interval this one 42 over uh, 42 to 51 okay let's get the lower class boundary so 42 ito yung lower limit 51 is the upper limit okay so 42 kasi sabi niya if you have a pen, please write it down. Lower class boundary, it's the middle value or the average of the lower class limit. So, ito 42 plus the upper class limit of the preceding class interval. So, ano yung preceding class? Naguna. So, ito yung preceding class interval or before. Okay? Ito yung before niya or preceding class interval. So, again... Average of the lower limit and the upper limit of the preceding class interval. Meaning, 42 plus 41, that is equal to 41.5. Okay? 42 plus 41 divided by 2, that's equal to 41.5. Did you get it, class? Okay, let's try this. The lower class boundary of... 32 to 41. Imagine my upper pa to. So, in up, um, upper uh, preceding class interval nito is equal to 22 to 31. Okay? Did you get it? Kasi nga, 10 yung class interval natin or class size or length of class interval is 10. Okay? So, 22 dito yung preceding interval to 31. Okay? So, yung lower class boundary... That's the average or the middle value of your lower limit, that's 32, and the upper limit of the preceding class interval. So, ang before, ano yung upper limit? That's 31. So, 31 plus 32 divided by 2, that's 31.5. Okay? But then, to cut it short, to summarize everything, lower class boundary, you just... Subtract 0.5 sa lower limit. So this one, you get 31.5, 41.5, 51.5, 61.5, 71.5, and 81.5. The same with the upper class boundary. You just add 0.5 sa upper limit. So that's 41.5, 51.5, 61.5, 71.5, 81.5, 81.5. Okay, class? So, mathematically, let's perform your upper class boundary. So, it's just the same with lower class, no? But this time, it's the average of the upper class limit. For example, this one, 51, yung upper limit. And the lower limit of the next class. So, ito, lower limit of the next class. It's 51 plus 52 divided by 2, that's equal to 51.5. Again, upper class boundary, that's the average of the upper limit and the lower limit of the next class interval. Okay? Ang sa lower class boundary man is the lower limit and the upper limit of the preceding class interval. I guess the definition is also in your SAS module. Okay? Try to reflect on the definition class. Medyo libog, pero that is the definition and that's how you will get your lower class and upper class boundaries. Or the other way around, just minus 0.5 and add 0.5. It's the same. Now, step 6, determine the class mark. So, ano ba yung class mark ito? When you say class mark, it's the middle value or the average na naman of a class interval. So, ito yung class interval. That's 32, the lower limit, plus the upper limit, 41, divided by 2. That's equal to 36.5. Okay? Try the second class interval. 
42 plus 51 divided by 2, that's 46.5, and so on and so forth, okay? So, ito na yung class mark. Did you get it, class? Okay. Let's proceed. Step 7, ito. Determine the cumulative frequency. This is very easy. Shows, uh, cumulative frequency class shows the accumulated frequencies of successive classes. So, there are two. You have greater than cumulative frequency and less than cumulative frequency. So, let's start for first with less than cumulative frequency. When you say less than, it shows the number of observations less than the upper class boundary. Okay? So, in here, what we will do, we will choose the lowest class interval. Ito yung lowest or the least class interval, 32 to 41. Ano yung frequency niya? 5. Let's copy it. 5, okay? Then you add the next class interval, that's 5 plus 9, so this is 14, okay? Did you follow the arrow? 14 plus 4, that's 18. 18 plus 8, that's 26. 26 plus 8, that's 34. 34 plus 6, that's 42, okay? Did you follow class? Again, you get, you, you get the lowest class interval, that's 32 to 41, its frequency is 5. Just copy it. This is for less than cumulative frequency. Ha? Copy 5. And then you add the succeeding um, or the next, its next frequency. So 5 plus 9, that's 14. 14 plus 4, that's 18. 18 plus 8, that's 26. 26 plus 8, that's 34. 34 plus 6, that's 42. Okay. Let's proceed with the greater than cumulative frequency. It shows that the number of observations greater than the lower class boundary. Okay? Try to reflect on the definition class. It's on your SAS module. So this time, opposite na naman. Let's, cho uh, let's um, choose the one with the highest class interval. So ito, 82 to 91. Its frequency is 6. So write it down, 6 dito, and then you add 6, the same with what we did earlier, 6 plus 8, 14, okay? 14 plus 8, 22, 22 plus 4, 26, 26 plus 9, 35, 35 plus 5, 40. If you solve together with me, you'll be able to get it or you'll be able to understand, Jude, okay, and follow did you follow class? I hope so. So in here, this is how you determine the cumulative frequency. Therefore, how do we conclude this? Meaning class, kasi sa less than cumulative frequency, these are the number of observations less than the UCB. Meaning only five students got scores less than 41.5. Meaning... 41 below. Kasi wala man yung unog, less than and equal to. Less than 41.5 meaning 41 and below. Okay? So did you get it? For a greater cumulative frequency, again, it shows the number of observations greater than the LCB. Meaning, 40 students got scores greater than 31.5. So that is 32 and above. Okay? Kasi greater than 31.5. Did you understand? So let's um, interpret the second class interval. Meaning 14 students, ito, 14 students, again, less than CF, observations less than UCB. So in here, 14 students got scores higher than, I mean, got scores less than, sorry class, got scores less than 51.5, meaning 51 and below. And 35 students got scores greater than your 41.5, and that is 42 and above. Okay? Did you get it, class? I hope so. Okay? So that's all for in constructing your frequency distribution table. 
Again, this is my reference, and this is also one of your references in, in your student activity sheet modules. Of course, I'm also referring or using your SAS modules. Thank you again, class, for listening. That's all for the frequency distribution table. You study smart and God bless everyone. Have a great day.